Yeah. Oh, yeah, I watched Berlin Calling, man. What a great movie. I watched Berlin Calling last week, you know, this week, yeah, this week, yeah, early in the week, I watched Berlin Calling, finally got around to watching it. Um, it's a pretty, pretty, what do you call it? What would you say? Pretty monumental, pretty influential, staple. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty important movie when it comes to club culture and electronic music. I think it was probably one of the first movies that perfectly encapsulated European electronic or dance music scene I've, obviously we've, we have our sort of like um domestic movies like 24 hour party people that was a really good primer in terms of understanding what was going on in the rave scene encapsulating it in a movie but i think berlin calling was the first sort of thing mass market got to see about what was going on with this whole techno tourism thing what was going on in europe um i think it was just about what probably the same time you know we were seeing videos of like love parade and that sort of good stuff so um of course um it follows um the, the the makings of a DJ who essentially goes a bit nuts and gets succumbed to the cult gets a, he succumbs to the perils of the scene right gets lost in the source somewhat goes a bit mad and te- ends up in a sailor asylum and in and through that it, he goes on a kind of a personal metaphysical sort of like musical journey right so this is rediscovering himself and what he's about um all all in the backdrop of like the berlin techno scene right it's a really really incredible movie i think um maybe not in the plot uh that's probably you know a bit by the by but i think the way that it sort of encapsulates the scene like weirdly at you know thematically and maybe texturally and uh, just the, the sounds and the images and the weird awkward scenes and the haphazard nature of the main protagonist it's just a really good movie it's a, probably again the best representation i think of club culture that i've seen in a while man really really expertly done um i can't recommend it anymore um one of the bits that really i was really that kind of struck with me was the scene in the toilet where he's talking to the blonde girl the, the couple of you know the first two interactions that they have there and the conversations that they're having very much um you know resonates with me and my experiences i've had in various uh metal clad uh bathrooms with random people you end up meeting right when you spend like 20 30 minutes talking in a bathroom plotting life plans other people on facebook and all that sort of good stuff right um and of course the fact that he gets lost in the source i think is a really good um cautionary tale really good cause to tell you know this idea that because I, I don't know i think when you get exposed to the, that that scene dance music electronic music there is something sort of ephemeral about it right this idea that you can essentially suspend all this or belief you can essentially become you know uh your version of peter pan right you don't really age in a scene you sort of just progress your fans stick with you it's not as it's not the most fickle of industries either which is really beneficial <coughs> Of course, it's really difficult to stay at the top, top, right? To be like a major selling <coughs> dance music act and still kind of re- remain relevant throughout the years, throughout the decades. But if you want to maintain a fan base and tour and make albums and do some edits and remixes, you can easily do that in the electronic music scene without having to um, resort to sounding like the young kids or doing anything gimmicky. It's one of the only scenes that kind of allows an artist to grow older and also it allows you sort of to mature, discover new sounds whilst you're... St- kind of fan base remains relatively the same for the most part which is really great to see um i saw that especially when i went to see richie horton play at the um, at fold sometime be- sometime before the end of last year for his new album that come out his little compilation album for his record label right and you look around the crowd and there was some people there who obviously have been following richie horton you know forever forever some actual older people with their earplugs in standing at the back just listening to it not really getting involved in the dancing and stuff just treating it more as a gig you got a lot of industry professionals there so it was a real good primary say okay cool this is what it looks like when you're richie horton's age right what your crowd looks like it includes someone like me it includes some younger sort of like cooler hip-hop people it involves some industry professionals that work in the dance music industry it includes some people that have been with you you know since you are a dj in detroit it's a really diverse range whereas maybe you know your more contemporary rapper indie artist has to kind of consistently be keeping abreast of what's going on in the scene and sort of like changing your artistic expression based on what's happening you can probably stay this you know you can p- remain pretty consistent I think of somebody like a Ricardo Villalobos, right? His sound has evolved somewhat, but it's sort of the same, right? Um, and fans love him for that. And I think that's probably one of the benefits of dance music scene. I think this kind of movie encapsulates it, but also shows, again, the the negative sides of it, right? You can get lost in the source. You can maybe indulge yourself way too much in the party life side of it, which is really fun. That's a problem with it. It's really fun. And for some people, it can be uh, a hindrance, but some people, it could also be 
a, a source of inspiration, right? Those kind of late nights in random people's houses after you're set, those, those occasions in the green room, they can be moments where you can, how can I say? It can be moments of inspiration where you can somehow pluck things out that can kind of um, impact or influence just the way you play, the music you make, your approach to stuff. Um, so it, it's really hard to separate the both of them. But I think the real superpower, I think, comes in the ability to treat it a bit like a job, but also be a little bit loose with it. So the idea that you can kind of go to a, a gig, go to your club appearance or whatever it may be, do your show completely sober, don't indulge in anything. Um, I don't know, if you're going to go collaborate with someone and make a track somewhere, you know try your best to do it you know sober too so that you can feel because that's why i think that's what happens usually when you indulge yourself too much in a party lifestyle you lose your feeling you lose your ability to kind of connect in an emotional level um in a metaphysic level maybe you kind of lose that it kind of stumps that barrier it's all sort of, which makes sense isn't it because when you get drunk you, you get a bit loose you get a bit wild but being sober and then being in that environment especially with all that kind of visual audio stimuli the lights everyone around you it can bring out a really amazing side of you like i remember when i first started dj that was the one of the things i did to kind of combat my fear of crowds i would only i, I would never drink before a set even during it i wouldn't drink i just want to be completely sober feel all the awkwardnesses of all, only having a couple of people dance Sing, the awkwardness of playing maybe the wrong track of clanging and just feel everything right so that when i play the next time and i kind of gain a bit of experience i could then feel what the next song was i could then feel what the vibe was calling for right but when you stump that or when you kind of hinder that kind of feeling with drugs and alcohol it can maybe lead to some stale appearances some really weird times i think we've all seen it when you've gone and seen a big dj and they've obviously indulged you can obviously clearly see they've you know they've got a bit too loose with the source before the gig and the sets can be a little bit haphazard they sometimes find their way but it can really affect how you see an artist but honestly man i think it was this is obviously a legendary scene where he sort of loses his mind and goes a bit crazy um but honestly man it's a really really great movie i really recommend you check it out again great soundtrack um the plot again isn't really worth shouting home about but just in terms of a film that captures the the peaks and the valleys of being a touring DJ act is really one of the best I've watched, honestly. And again, I was putting it off for a long time because I just didn't want to be, I didn't want to be reminded of just how far away we are from having this again, you know, um, being in a closed environment such as a club and being exposed to a DJ standing on top of a stage somewhere playing some of our best beats while we, you know, spin around in circles, talking to strangers we just met, like they're our best friends. It's going to be a long time until that happens. But yeah, um, definitely check out Berlin Calling, man. One of my... Um, favorite movies i think so far in terms of encapsulating cup culture i can't recommend it anymore